This is Kevin R. Cashin, one of only a few people in the world who holds the title of Master Bladesmith. He earned this title in the American Bladesmith Society, the largest and most trusted name in the art of forging blades. Today, he's going to be looking at swords in Destiny 2 and will give you an edge the next time someone questions your sword logic. Stay tuned for the end because he's also going to be looking at the only sword in Destiny you can use but can't have in your inventory. My shot. I shall wreathe you in gold. This one piques my interest because this one is reminiscent of a rapier. And a rapier is one of my favorite swords. The pommel it is keeping the hand from sliding off the back to be more effective as a thrust weapon. Maybe you did do the thrust and you want to pull, you know, recover, pull back quick for a second thrust. That's what the pommel design looks like for me on this one. One of my lesser favorite parts of this sword is probably the grip. I would like to see more shaping that helps orient the blade in its use and and uh, to facilitate the grip. But I mean, the, the, the cross hilt and, and the hilt is absolutely the most fascinating part of this piece. Though. Very reminiscent of swept hilt style rapiers. The only criticism that I've had is a, a, a bit too much in that there's a lot of sharpened edge behind the forward guards, making that sharpened edge pretty much just there for looks. And it looks like there might be some energy delivery involved in this as well. It looks like a good one third of the blade is, is, is rendered pretty much harmless behind all of this guard. This would be a serpentine style. Many blades that had this style and yes, even rapier blades in Europe it would have been the flamberge style. You know, it's, it's almost like a flame-shaped edge. In the Far East, you would have Indonesian, Javan, and uh, Bali. In that area of the world, you would have the Karisas, this wavy blade shape. But the psychological impact is usually there. You know, as soon as you draw a weapon that has something that looks like that, somebody definitely is paying attention to what you have in your hand. Just out of sheer style, I, I like the looks of it. I think I'd give this a, a good solid seven. I heard your first. Sounds cool. It, it's reminiscent of katana. Rather than immediately seeing a hamon, the hardened zone on the edge of a katana, the energy discharge caused a, a differential coloration in the oxides along the blade. Sort of remind me of a violin bow, but <laughs> this is similar to the to the other one that was a D guard. This is a C guard in that it doesn't con connect in the back, but it serves the exact same function. It's a little lighter, sportier model. It looks comfortable in the hand. It has an organic look, an organic feel, which makes it just seem friendlier to the hand. This, this looks like a, a weapon that would become a, a, an old trusted friend if you were carrying it on your side a long time. It just looks like it has that character. The, the cutting edge as it passes through something, you would need some way to protect the elements that are above the blade there from whatever material is passing by as the edge cuts through. If I was using it purely as a cutting instrument, I would have reservations about its use. Probably a four. It has some elements that are appealing. The handle and the grip and everything looks very comfortable and very functional. But because of the limitations of what's going on behind, directly behind the blade, I'd have to give it a four. I could feel that in my bones! Uh, the pommel, rather than some sort of a functional aspect in using the sword, it, it flares out just a little bit, but not that much. I'm assuming this is, this is a two-handed weapon just due to the, the length of the hilt. The guard is is fairly straightforward. There's a few sharp edges, and I'm not talking about, you know, sharp edges as in a knife edge. I'm talking about, you know, really sharp 90 degree unpolished and pointy areas up in there. Suddenly I see this and I say, well, I have to wear gloves because I wouldn't want to knock my knuckles on that. There were swords, or should I say daggers, they were called sword breakers or sword catchers, and they, they did have large lugs like that for catching. Now, obviously there's no thrusting ability to this sword whatsoever, and I'm not sure physically for cutting what those squares would add to out there at the tip, except for possibly snagging. I see them more as a liability. If I was the evil overlord of the universe and I wanted to make a point with my executions, I would probably have my executioner use this guy. A six to seven, probably a six. Status, calamitous. To me, it looks like a lot of silicon 
and other things going on that you would have with the with circuitry. A pommel of that sort, the back side of the hill, has a pommel designed to keep it from leaving the hand in a heavy swing. What I'm seeing here, rather than a, a chainsaw, more like a sickle type blade, a sickle mower type blade, chainsaw would be probably more effective. Whereas a, a, a sickle type cutting system where you have you have teeth moving past each other like this, there's a possibility of something that's too large to get between the teeth not being effectively cut. You know, I'll give it to the ben benefit of the doubt to the chainsaw. Now the tip you say being in some sort of an acceleration to the swing, that's interesting and intriguing that, the, that, that, that something like this could exist. The, my concern in the actual use is deceleration. Would it allow you to decelerate this thing and bring it back into action very quickly should you not quite make the swing would be my concern with that. In actual combat, say in my backyard, I'm being attacked I'm being attacked by somebody. I'm not sure I would I would feel as confident as maybe some of the other blades that I'm going to see using this one in the real world. Rating it as a sword, and what I find appealing as a sword, a sword that I would let you know if if I was in this 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 universe where this is being used, uh, I would give that maybe a, a three, maybe a three. Even the warlock orders don't fully understand the ramifications. It looks like what we would call in my business, as far as knives and other blades, a sanmai. And you can see it in the V-notches down the spine, in that it looks like there is another material that is sandwiched in between the outer cladding. Yeah, a little bit little bit of composites going on here. Yeah, the pommel, it, it's it's almost non-existent. It really, does, it's not adding or detracting to much of anything, both in balance and also this thing wanting to leave your hand when you swing it. I'd like to see a little more back there. I think that, I think we have, we have a serious weakness in the design of this one and not having more of a pommel. The guard, my only concern is that it's the way the, the blade flares out before the guard, kind of negating it. In that it, anything sliding down that edge has a ramp. It's going to slide up this ramp, go right over the guard and get you in the, in, probably in your wrist. I really like the, the texturing. I can see like some sort of surface planing. Those V-notches along the spine wouldn't be as critical as one that was along the edge. The spine doesn't necessarily have to be as hard as the edge. It's a traditional shape falchion, uh, you know, a single-edged sword, medieval Europe. I think it would be heavy and awkward to use, but in a pinch, probably get a few swings out of it before it would tire you out a little bit. I command the needle. Because it does have classic elements there, and there's a lot of interesting things going on, despite the fact I think it would be a little bit heavy, I'm going to give this a six. Had it made special for you and only... No, that's a lie. In another genre, this would be very elvish to me. It's almost sci-fi meets Tolkien going on here. Um, this is a D-style guard, or uh, it, it incorporates a knuckle guard, essentially. Usually there's something that, that's assisting in the grip of a sword, something organic. Quite often there'll be wood, horn, leather. If I had to use it all day, it might get uncomfortable in the hand. Some places, it, there's very little material between the outside edge and where that's removed with an iron carbon base material that would be a, a weak point that tip is definitely it looks like it'd be very effective for piercing i suspect that there's probably some sort of extra energy besides kinetic energy being delivered by this blade it's a recurved blade for the most part it, with that knuckle card it looks like it's it's designed for single hand use something similar to a yadagon so when you have that sort of a recurve in the blade once again it increases the cutting power and once again the cutting power about where that where that purple looking gem is in that blade that's there that's where you're maximizing the cut i would probably give this one a six a six were it so easy i don't think we're seeing much in the way of traditional sword here so we're gonna i'm gonna have to kind of get outside of my wheelhouse to kind of describe this the pommel i don't see where it's adding or detracting at all to the the use of it as a cutting weapon probably the most high tech of any of the weapons that i've seen in that everything i'm seeing on that grip looks like some sort of panel to access circuitry or electronics underneath they're using the power of that energy as to guard the hand my only concern 
concern with that is I would want to make sure that the distance between the grip and that energy was such that I would never involve myself in it, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't want my fingers coming anywhere near that. There's another point directly down from where the cross guard comes out. I see a very effective offensive use right there for some sort of, a, you know, a, a pummeling blow. This is some sort of concentrated energy. The fun part about that is you can make it infinitely thin. You can see there's cooling systems and there's holes cut in the framework. The whole thing has the appearance of a very light, quick blade. Because of all the limitations that I see, I, I just, yeah, I'd give this one a five. Trials of Osiris. This looks, everything about this sort of reminds me of a memory module for a computer. <laughs> it looks like a, a stick of RAM to me. I mean, maybe there's portions of the blade that are composite material, elements of bronze, hearkening back to the Bronze Age weapon, the Kopesh. The bronze portion of it is a little thicker than I would like because it, once again, it, it would cause a bind in the cut as this thing cut through something. This heavy material on the back could interfere with that cut. Whereas the edge looks looks like it's very keen. I would like to see a little more presence to the pommel to keep it in the hand, but it's it's not bad. I'm seeing all kinds of elements to kind of increase the grip. It has some bead work going on there that would help with the grip and some sort of cloth, perhaps leather wrapped around it a few times to help with the grip. The guard looks like it would double almost as a trigger to me. Now that I'm looking at it, at first it looked like a Kopesh. Now I'm seeing something along the lines of an 1870 Winchester lever action <laughs> overall it's somewhat in line with the handle so you could do some limited thrusting with it but i don't see this as a very strong thrusting weapon there's a little recurve in the cutting edge there that would if you were to actually thrust with it that could snag and would make it kind of hard to retrieve back out again as long as we're all working with those those bronze age style battle tactics i think it works just because i can't figure out exactly what it's what it's doing i'm going to be generous i want to give it a five but i'm going to give this one a six True Guardian grabs the danger and walks around with it. This is metallic. There may be some carbon fiber type components in the hilt. It looks very quick and very light because of the, you know, for that very reason. A grip shape similar to something on a katana or a tachi. It, this, this was inspired by a Japanese piece. Obviously the Japanese sword has a lovely hand protection in, in the form of a suba, which is the round disc guard that would be on there. I have a concern with the really sharp notch. We would call that a choil. That, that can be a liability a sword, a notch of that style is a, is a hindrance to impact toughness. The edge otherwise looks very keen. It almost speaks sharp. My one critique is the point of this sword is, is nice, it's stylized, but it doesn't really function too well as a thrusting weapon because of its sharp upturn. I would like to see that point more in line with the spine of the blade. This would be a, a, a fairly effective sword in real life. Oh, let's see. This one, just because I could just, I could see myself going out in the backyard and hitting some targets with this right now, I'll give this an eight. Hive, bring a sword. This is some kind of chitinous material, perhaps held together with hive magic. Looking at the undulations along the edge and stuff, I'd rather whack somebody with the spine of this thing. Try to try to get some use out of those those, those fangs or those spikes, um, those protrusions along the back. So I wouldn't want to to use this one in real life without some heavy shaping or reshaping or modifications by myself. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. Be sure to check out Kevin's website, cashandblades.com and YouTube to learn more about his classes and blades, link in the description. If you liked the video, please subscribe, join my Discord, link in the description, and tell me down in the comments what your new favorite sword is. Thank you.